All right, now that we can print out useful information about an instance of an entity, let's refactor our create factory method to actually differentiate instances of entity. So to do this, we're gonna change this and make it no longer a single expression function. So we will add the return type of entity and then we'll add a return keyword and now we'll add entity. Now, the first thing we wanna do here is actually add a proper ID value. So here we could say val ID equals you do ID dot random UUID dot to string. So this will give us a new random identifier and then we can pass that into our entity. But now we have this name property. So what can we do to pass in a name here? Well, one thing we might do is think about differentiating between different types of entities. So in a very basic case, maybe you wanna differentiate between easy, medium, and hard difficulties of these entity types. So we might want to then have some way of passing or indicating to this factory method what those different types should be. So one way we could do this is with an enum class. Now, if you're familiar with Java, an enum class is gonna be very similar to what you're familiar with from enums in Java. To do that, we can start typing enum and then class. And then in this case, we might name this something like entity type, then open and close curly braces, and then we can iterate the different instances of the enum. So in this case, we might say easy, medium, hard. So now we can come down here to our create method, and then we can add a type parameter of entity type. And so now we could say val name equals when type, and then we're going to add in the remaining branches. So now we have a branch for each of our entity types. And then for a basic name, I'm just going to map these to a string. So we'll say easy, medium, and hard. And so now I can pass in that name. So now our factory method actually allows us to differentiate and create different types of instances. Down here, we might start off by creating an easy entity, and then we'll print that out. And then we might say val medium entity equals entity factory dot create entity type medium. And then we can print that out as well. And if we run this, we'll now see that we have a unique identifier for each entity, and then we have the customized name based on that entity type. So the addition of this enum class to represent our entity type has allowed us to pass in different types to our factory method and then customize the way that those entities are created by mapping the entity type to a name. Now, in this case, we're mapping the name very closely to the name of the actual class itself. So to make this a little bit easier and more encapsulated, there's a couple of things we could do. So the first thing we could do is take advantage of the name property on an enum class. So to do that, we could reference our type dot name. So this is referencing the name of that actual enum class. And if we run this, we can see what that name looks like. So you see, it's easy, all in capital letters. This matches exactly the way that the class name is actually defined. So this allows us to reference the class's name directly without having to map it manually. Now this is nice, however, we don't have a lot of control over the formatting here. So another thing we could do is actually add a new method to our enum class. So in this case, we could add fun get formatted name and then we could reference that name property dot to lowercase dot capitalize. So this will return us that preformatted name and capitalize the first letter. So now down here, we could update our medium mapping and type type dot get formatted name. 
And so now if we run this code again, we'll see that the first one by using the name property directly is all capitalized. But now by using our new formatted method, we have a nicer formatting similar to what we were using before. So this is just one example of how you can define an enum class and then add additional properties and methods to that class like you would any other class.